The first ever live action Flash movie was a flop and the box office with audiences was Flash fans all around the world. I think we all know why. <clears throat> and <laughs> here we are discussing the sequel to that same movie, whether or not it will feature Ezra Miller or Grant or Lucas Till as the Flash, which for the record, Grant and Lucas are the two top competitors, for fans at least, to replace Ezra as the Flash. Now at this point in time I'm recording this, I don't believe we actually heard anything if there is a sequel. I know there was a report going around that Andy Muschietti already wrote a script for The Flash 2, but James Gunn has not confirmed anything. So as far as I'm aware, that is not legit, and Andy is just being cocky because he thinks he knows everything. And why I'm calling him cocky? Because he thinks Ezra Miller is better than Grant. And that alone makes me really despise Andy and want nothing to do with him and therefore it pisses me off. But we're not here to talk about my hate for Andy or my hate for the movie. We're here to discuss my thoughts for the sequel. More particularly the villain of the film. Because obviously you have to be a big bad to film for it to be a flash film because it really won't work anyways. <laughs> and so we're going to discuss my top six personal, what I would personally choose to be the big bad of the next flash film out of those top six who I want to be the big bad of that film. But there's also some honorable mentions that I want to point out that really wouldn't work in live action flash film. Once it's either backed up by, you know, some backstory or additional movies beforehand or just because they've already kind of done that in past versions or even in the first film. So here we go. Honorable mention number one, Cobalt Blue. There needs to be more development with this character if they're going to introduce Malcolm Thawne. They need to introduce Eobar Thawne first. So <laughs> they haven't done that in DCU or DCU and they kind of screwed that over in the first ever Flash movie. I mean, that alone just screamed no Cobalt Blue. But again, it would be nice to see like an, a comic accurate Cobalt Blue with, you know, that sword that he carries around, that cape, that mask. If it kind of got screwed over in CW show over, don't get me wrong, it was amazing seeing Cobalt Blue in live action, but we only saw him for like 10 minutes and then that was it. So it would be nice to see a full on live action movie of Barry and Malcolm fighting, but we need Eobard first. Otherwise that wouldn't really work because then it's like you're gonna some Malcolm first and not Eobard or Eddie even. Like that's a little weird. Next up is the Kato or the Thinker. Not both, but either or. Now there's gonna put either or here it's because while it would be cool to see both these two characters done properly in live action, because let's be real, the CW show did not do a good job of these two villains because A, DeVoe was dragged out and committed to something one episode, and two, Cicada, again, got dragged out when they could have stopped them by episode eight, but dragged it out. A movie for just Cicada or just DeVoe as a big bad would not work. They would need other villains to make Cicada or DeVoe be the main villain in the film, like the rogues or, you know, a bunch of side villains to lead up to DeVoe or Cicada. Now, Cicada, you could maybe make it work if it's like an hour and a half long film, but for DeVoe, I mean, it depends how powerful Barry is and how powerful DeVoe is, right? Because the main problem with DeVoe in the CW show is that Barry could have something like that, but he didn't because the writing needed DeVoe to stick around for the entire season, and therefore, that's what we got. There's no way in hell you can make a full-on live-action Flash film with just one of those two villains, and it wouldn't feel dragged out. Because the villains don't really work that way. They're great villains. Don't get me wrong. That's why I'm mentioning them here. But they wouldn't really work in a full-on Flash movie if they're not flushed out with more villains backing them up. In my opinion. The last item I'm going to point out is Future Evil Flash. Now, I don't mean like, you know, Savitar or the one we got in the Flash movie. I mean one from the comics. The one that's out for vengeance that lost everything and goes on the murder spree. And, you know, it's a really cool story. And the main reason I want to see this character done live action is because I want to see that suit in live action. I want to see compared to a live action Flash... With that, with that blue suit, that blue, you know, just everything. I want to see it done live action. Now, this wouldn't be done in CW show, obviously because, hey, it's done. But also, when it was done, it wouldn't have been done because we got Savitar. And that Savitar is pretty much what it was in the comics with Future Flash. But, this is not mentioned in top six for this list. Because we already kind of got an evil future Barry in the first film. With it being the past Barry that became a future evil version and became Dark Flash. It's very complicated, but <laughs> we kind of already got that. So that's why I'm not mentioning the top six. But 
Here are the top six villains. I want to see be the big bad of the next Flash film. At least one of these top six be the big bad of the next Flash film. So number six is The Rival. And the main reason I say this, I mean, a comic book aggro version of The Rival. Not a CW version of The Rival. I mean, a comic book, you know, look like Jay Garrick Rival. Now, the reason I want this is because you can introduce Jay Garrick in the DCU. And that would set up like Barry and Jay teaming up to fight The Rival. Could open up so many more things if they're just Jay Garrick and have him work with Baron to take down the rival. I think it would be so cool. If they cast him right, it would really, really, truly work. And with that in mind, I do think that if they go down the route of the rival, it could truly, really work. It just depends, you know, who's cast and who's not. Um, coming number five is Black Flash. Now again, Dark Flash kind of gave those vibes of Black Flash, but at least the look alike of Black Flash, but it would still be cool to see a full-on comic book aggro version of Black Flash who would see face the death of the Speed Force. So let me show, again, nerf the hell out of Black Flash and didn't really do anything powerful with him because, I mean, Barry technically killed him <laughs> in the third season, but... It would still be nice to get a flushed out, really powerful version of Black Flash. And for that reason, he's number five on the list. Also, you know, to see that all done live action again. I know it's there already, but it would really be cool to see done properly live action. Coming number four are the rogues. Now, this is a long list because it's the rogues. You can't just name one person and like, oh. But for the rogues, if they were to do this... It would need to be Captain Cold, Heat Wave, Golden Glider, Mirror Master, Captain Boomerang, and possibly Grodd, who's been known to be part of the Rogues before. I think this would be an amazing villain list because A, you could flush it out the entire film and not feel like it's dragged out because you would have six, seven villains here and... Or six, one, two, three, four, five. I don't even know the list I just made. <laughs> uh, the six villains that would be part of the rogues, if that were to happen, that'd be a pretty hefty pack for the Flash to deal with in the second live action Flash film. Depending on the Flash, and depending how more advanced he is than you know he was beforehand. Coming in number three is Red Death. Now we don't know who's being cast as Batman yet in the new DCU, but. If he's a good actor <laughs> and a good Batman, I think it's fair to say that, you know, they could pull off an even better right death than CW did, much better version than CW did, but also manage to pull off a comic book accurate version of right death, which I think would be really cool to see done live action. Would it be cool if it's Ben Affleck? Possibly. I think he had the voice for it. For sure, and the acting for it, but we're not going to get Ben back, so you know, there's that's out the window. But it would still be cool if Hunter or uh, if Right Death was a part of this, you know, new DCU and was a Flash villain that was introduced after the new Batman was cast. Going to number two, Hunter Zalman, aka Professor Zoom, and I do mean Professor Zoom, not the W version of Zoom, which don't get me wrong bleeping amazing and I love Zoom and CW but a comic book accurate version of Hunter Zalman of Professor Zoom I think would be amazing to see done in a DCU and for next Flash film most importantly you don't really need any setup because you already have it Flashpoint you just did it you could say straight out the gate that hey Hunter Zalman Start being it because of Flashpoint, what Barry did, and he hates the Flash. It, you come up with the story, but the point is, they can do that through Flashpoint. They can say that Barry created all these new threats, including Hunter Zalman, who made before maybe didn't have powers, but now he does, and here he is, Professor Zoom. I think that'd be really cool. Also, if he is comic book accurate and has that comic book accurate suit with the black eyes and, you know, like the, well, the red eyes precisely, but the black around the red eyes, that would be so, so cool. And then coming in number one, I think we all know who it is, 
the Reverse Flash, aka Eobar Thawne. This villain, Thawne should have been in the first film. I don't care what anyone says, he should have been in the first film. I don't know what on earth Andy or the writers of this film thought it was a good idea to not do Thawne, but they need to do him at some point. Thawne is Barry's worst enemy in every iteration. Maybe not the 90s Flash, because they kind of went with Pollux. But the point is, Thawne is Barry's worst enemy for centuries. And they don't even make him kill Barry's mother and in DCU. So that emotional impact that Barry has with Thawne is already out the window. Unless they do another Flash film and Thawne is the big bad here. And it, it's really confessed like, hey, Thawne did kill Barry's mother. Great. Do it. But if it's not like that, what is the point? The reason Barry and Thawne work is because Thawne has been under Barry's skin since he was 11. Right? Thawne has loved the Flash. He became the Flash or a Flash. And then Barry stole his thunder and Thawne became the reverse. We haven't seen that at all. <laughs> and then the further movie for The Flash, again, didn't have Thawn in it. So you can't really definitively sit there and say, hey, Thawne's part of this universe. And if they do Thawne again, it would be the same as CW because it won't be. It'll be worse because there's no emotional impact. Right? I mean, yeah, Thawne shows up and kills like two people close to Barry. Then what? Ooh, he killed two people. Um, Zod or Stephen Wolf or, you know, hell, Dark Flash killed like 10 people. I, if, if you introduce Thawne in a DCU, there needs to be an emotional impact for Barry. If they don't do that, there's no point for Thawne to show up. Because you already erased that possibility of him murdering Barry's mother. So, what's the point? In every iteration of Thawne, he's always killed Barry's mother. Besides the 90s Flash, and besides maybe some other small iterations here and there. And no, I'm not saying 90s Flash or just small. I was saying like other like minor ones that aren't that popular as 90s Flash or Sibby's Flash. But, they've already vetoed that. But Thawne killing Barry's mother. It didn't happen, DCU. It didn't happen to Ezra's Flash. But it's really pathetic. I mean, it shouldn't be that way. And I know I've complained about it a lot on this channel and videos I talked about this movie. But I do think they need to do Thawne. Because he's really the reverse Flash. It's kind of obvious that you need him in a Flash movie. I mean, they should have been done the first time. I know I said it like five times by now, but it really should have. It probably wouldn't have made a movie like a hundred times better if they did it right. Oh, well, I guess they probably wouldn't have because they didn't do Flashpoint even right. So I don't, who the hell knows? But, you know, do we really know what's going to be going on here? I mean, we don't. We don't know anything about Thawne in DCU. Does this even exist? I mean, then we go back to Cobalt Blue and Eddie and Malcolm. I mean, would those guys even presumably happen? Because clearly... You know, you can't do Cobalt Blue. You can't introduce Eddie without Eobard. Well, you can introduce Eddie, I guess. But if you introduce Eddie Thawne, where's Eobard? Like, there's a major problem here with the DCU Flash. And the number one, one of the many things is that Eobard is not there at all. And so they do introduce Eobard. I know it's not right, but I want to repeat it. If they introduce Eobar Thawne in the second Flash movie, for the live action area at least, and they introduce Thawne, uh, <laughs> there's going to be some problems. Because it, A, won't be as emotional, hard-hitting, unless they make Thawne kill Barry's mother, like go back in time and kill her in front of him. But what would the point of that even be? I mean, she's going to die no matter what. You know, Sibby Show made it work because it was a long loop that kept on happening and happening and happening. Where Thawne always killed Barry's mother. It wasn't some random mugger 
or some random person that broke in while Henry Allen was away. I mean, it was clearly proven that Thawne killed Barry's mother. In every iteration, every timeline for the W show, Thawne killed Barry's mother. The DCU wiped that out. And again, if they do Thawne, it's going to be screwed over. So that impact will be gone. And to me, but that's not really worth it. Let's say write them correctly and fix all that. Which again, the first ever Flash movie would be kind of useless anyways because the only thing it really did was create a DCU, which you could have done a thousand different ways. So then the first movie would be really pointless to watch because, you know, I mean, it already kind of is pointless to watch, but <laughs> besides Keaton and Sasha, which we're never going to see again, probably. But that's what we're dealing with. So I just really wanted this video just to discuss, like, my top six favorite villains I want to see as a big bad in the next Flash film. So let me know in the comments down below if you're still watching at this point. Who you want to see. And thanks for watching. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.